In this video, we're going to talk about using shapes and pictures with InDesign. And the very good news is that I don't really have to talk about shapes or even the pen tool because they work very similarly to how Adobe Illustrator works. So please watch those previous videos of mine concerning those tools if you feel the need to. So let's just concentrate on inserting pictures, shall we? There's really just two ways of going about it. You can place the picture directly onto your board or you can use the frame tool first and then place the picture and I'll kind of explain why that might be a good fit for your project. So placing directly the first method is really pretty simple. Go up to file and find the word place. The new window pops up prompting you to navigate to where the picture is that you're looking for and once you find it like I have here go ahead and click on the image to highlight it and make sure that check mark is there and then press open. You'll notice that your cursor changes a bit with the thumbnail of the image that you're trying to place so go ahead and just click anywhere to place the picture and voila it places. The grips on the picture do behave a little bit differently, so with the black arrow highlighted in the toolbar, if you click and drag the grips, you'll notice that they actually don't move the picture itself, they, they sort of crop it. So if you actually want to move the picture with the black arrow, um, you have to just grab inside of that outer frame and place it that way. There's another weird little quirk. The white arrow will actually move and manipulate the picture inside of the frame. So right underneath the black arrow in the toolbar, you'll see the white arrow. Go ahead and click on that and then come back over. Do you see how it turned into a little hand? That's your pan hand and you just click and drag and you'll notice what happened is it's actually the picture itself that moved not that original outer frame. So the more I move it, do you see how that orange outline is indicating where the picture actually is? But the blue frame is where the boundaries of that picture, like where it can live. So kind of think of a picture frame that you'd put on your dresser. The boundaries are the frame itself and you can move the picture inside of that frame any way that you want to. So there it is. So the black arrow controls the outer frame, the white arrow controls the picture inside the frame. Very important behavior with InDesign. So that teaches you the first method of just simply placing the picture. The second one that we're going to use is the frame tool. Now in all actuality, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this. When a magazine is putting together the layout of the inside pages, a lot of times these frames are going to act as placeholders. So they may not have a picture yet, but the frame allows them the opportunity to size it as they see fit in their layouts. So to place a frame, it's located over in the toolbar and it looks like a rectangle with a little X on it. Go ahead and click on that. And let's just say that maybe this is where I want the picture to actually live. I don't know if that's the size that it's supposed to be, but this is where I want the picture. To place the picture, we're going to go ahead and go up to File and Place, but you have to make sure that that frame is highlighted first. So once you do File and Place and you find the picture that you want to work with, just go ahead and click Open and you'll see that that picture places inside the frame. Now you'll notice this is not the entire picture. Again, the frame turned out to be smaller than the actual picture and in InDesign, that is a possibility. So I hope you can see how you can size a picture before you even place it so that you know that that's where it's supposed to be when you're doing layouts for posters and various things. It's just one method. You can certainly use any method that you feel comfortable with. And actually, in addition to the black and white arrows, InDesign has some other modification tools. So if you go up to Object, uh, the first one I want to show you is Transform. Transform allows you to move, scale, rotate, you can even flip the image if you want to. Uh, these commands are also located in Adobe Illustrator and pretty much do the same thing. A little bit further down is Arrange. So this one will bring like one picture on top of another or it'll place a picture below something else. It kind of acts the same way that layers do. It's just that you can now find those kind of commands up here in the menu as well. And the other tool that I want to show you is called Fitting, which is located about halfway down. 
Fitting has this side panel full of tools to help you fit your picture the way that it needs to. So the fitting tool is designed for people who are trying to get a picture to fit into a specifically sized frame. So let me just go through a couple of these. So it says fill frame proportionately when you click on that. It'll basically fill the entire frame as proportionately as it can with as minor cropping as possible. So there might still be a little bit of cropping happening, but for the most part, the frame is going to be completely filled. Fit content proportionally will ensure that the picture fits within the boundaries of the outer frame completely, but there could be some blank areas inside of the frame because the picture and the frame aren't the same sizes. So in this example, you will see that the picture is completely entirely in the frame, but on the left and right sides, um, let me see if I can come in a little bit closer. You can see that that picture doesn't fill the frame completely. There's some blank areas on the left side and the right side. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. Control plus and control minus. Content aware fit. It's kind of like a smart fit. It analyzes the picture and it crops it in a way that the software thinks is best. So it kind of focuses on what it sees as the main content of the picture and less on the background elements. So here you can see the algorithms of the software felt that the cat and the chair positioned in this particular way was the best way to show this picture. I think things like the rule of thirds and other photography based guidelines are used when making this algorithm. So it could be a, a nice, easy cheat tool for you to use uh, on some of your posters. Fit frame to content will actually take the size of the original picture and force the outer frame to fit around it. So you can see that blue frame is snugly fitting all the way around the original size of that picture. And then the last one that I want to show you is the fit content to frame. However, before I show that, cancel, um, what I want to do is I want to adjust this outer frame with the black arrow so that it kind of makes it skinny. And, and this is going to be kind of weird, but um, basically what this is going to do, fit content to frame, is it's going to take all the content that's supposed to go inside of that frame and force it to fit within the boundaries. So that means that it's going to fill that frame no matter how skewed the picture gets. So just remember that skewing pictures on interior design posters is definitely not professional and I rarely recommend ever using this one. But I still feel like it's an important one to show you just so that you know what it does. And that's really all there is to placing an image, y'all. If you want to see the document that you're working on without the frame showing, you know, to see what it looks like when it prints, just to demonstrate, I'm going to kind of come in here and be like, well, maybe this is how I want it to look, but gosh darn it, that pesky outer frame, it's getting in my way of understanding what this entire document is going to look like. Go over to the toolbar, and at that very last tool, if you click and hold it, you'll see that um, there's normal preview bleed and slug. If you go ahead and click on presentation, it's going to show you what the document's going to look like without those frames. So the frames are never going to print, but they are just there to guide you while you're creating your layouts. And if you want to go back, um, let's see, I think all you have to do is hit escape and then just make sure that you go back to where it says normal, which it already kind of came back to. And that everybody is how to place pictures in InDesign. The idea behind these videos is that, you know, you can take the tools and concepts I've shown you and you can make your own interior design presentation boards. So let your creativity be your guide and may the force be with you.